everyone to Straight Talk. And today my guest is Robert Kravitz. I don't know, I, you've been writing for ISSA publications, Clean Facts, Cleaning and Maintenance Management, ISSA Today for a long time. I don't know if we can pick a year that we got started. Actually, I started writing for the industry in 1998. We I, can pick a year, 1998. 1998. Uh, but it, it blossomed in 2002 when I started my PR communications firm. Very successful. Every time I look at my inbox, there's Robert with an idea for a good article. So we appreciate all you do. Thank you so much, Jim. And Today, I want to thank you for inviting me on the show. And I want to thank you for the great service you're doing for the professional cleaning industry. Nobody else is doing this. And it's you're bringing so many people to the, the industry's getting to know so many people. You're doing a terrific job. And I really appreciate it. And I know many people appreciate what you're doing, Jeff. Well, it's very kind, Robert. Thank you for that. And I do look forward to seeing you in person one day at a next event. But today, we're going to talk about an important topic that is close to your heart. And that's the thought leadership idea. So, you know, we think about what that means, uh, thought leadership. We're going to develop that topic today. But Robert, your firm focuses on promoting thought leaders in different industries. So let's start this, with this question. You know, what is a thought leader? Well, the first thing I want your viewers to know, Jeff, is that a thought leader is an individual or it can be an organization. For 20 years, we've been promoting, been promoting, promoting organizations as thought leaders. Um, usually thought leaders also are specific to an industry or field. They're not in cleaning, they're not in accounting, they're not in cleaning, they're not in retail, they're in cleaning or they're in retail. As their stature rises as a thought leader, as an expert, people turn to them for their views. They wanna know what they think about challenges, how to adjust changes in the industries. They inspire people. So essentially it's an evolutionary process. They start building their stature and people turn to them for advice. So that's what I, how I define a thought leader. Okay. Now it takes time for a thought leader to become one. Is that Correct. true? That is true. Um, let's compare it to an individual, especially today with young people, they like to work for organizations that support their own views. Could be green cleaning, sustainability, ergonomics, safety, all right, so there's, they feel strongly about this. They go to work for an organization that starts supporting those views. In time, they start giving talks at uh, conventions, representing those views and the rep views of the organization. They do seminars, they do webinars, they publish articles in trade publications, which we're gonna talk about more. In time, their stature grows as the organization's stature grows. But then what happens, Jeff, is I think they take what I call the big leap. They decide it's time they wanna go off on their own and become their own thought leader. It's an, again, it's an evolutionary process. You know, Robert, um, I've been around a while and I must say that many years ago, the term thought leader wasn't part of my vocabulary. It's just, but now it seems to be a buzzword in marketing. Is it a new concept or have we always had thought leaders? The first time the term was ever used was in 1887 by the Oxford Dictionary. And they were referencing a man named Ward Beecher. And Ward Beecher, they called a great thought leader in America. Now, interesting, after 1887, you know, we had World War I, we had the Depression, we had World War II, we had, you know, so many events in our country and around the world, and we had a lot of leaders but none of them were referred to as thought leaders. Mm -hmm. Everything changed in the 1970s when Silicon Valley took off. Then we had Bill Hewitt and David Packard, and they became the thought leaders of Silicon Valley in the 70s and in the 80s. It might interest your viewers to know that one day Hewitt, who was listed in the Palo Alto phone book in California, got a call from this 12 year old kid and the kid is asking him, he wants to get computer parts for a gizmo he's making. 
And you were so impressed with this kid. They're talking on the phone 20, 25 minutes. He tells him, as soon as school's out, I want you to come work for me at Hewlett Packard. And that kid worked at Hewlett Packard two or three summers. Well, that 12 year old kid turned out to be Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs became the leading thought leader in Silicon Valley. And I wanna say he's probably one of the leading thought leaders in this country. So um, the term start in 1887, disappeared, was resurrected in the Silicon Valley era. That's an amazing story. And um, maybe one that uh, some have heard of before. Uh, great, thank you for sharing that. So Robert, your own experience working with thought leaders and promoting them, how'd you get started with that? As I say, I started this company 20 years ago. And when I look back, Jeff, it's really been the basis of what we've been doing from the start. Most of my clients were manufacturers or organizations. We started writing educational how-to articles and trade publications, promoting them first as experts, as experts. And then in time, they became thought leaders in the industry. That was the goal, to present them as thought leaders. And in those days, especially, as I mentioned, we did this mostly through publishing, publishing, publishing. It's an ongoing process. And I've been doing that for 20 years. Yeah, you're doing a great job with it. Um, you mentioned Steve Jobs and that industry. And, and I have to wonder, in the cleaning industry, are there very many thought leaders? Can you talk about that? We have quite a few, I'm proud to say. I worked for, I should say, years ago, and John Garfinkel was the director. Did you meet John Garfinkel? May I ask? I, I know him well. We've had many meals together. Wonderful. Well, I can tell you, John can be a tough character, but he's powerful. He's influential. He was the head of ISSA during some challenging periods in the 1990s. A lot of people didn't think ISSA was needed anymore. No, John Garfinkel said ISSA is needed more now than ever before. The industry needs ISSA. I honestly believe ISSA was a stronger, more powerful organization than when he started. Now, as far as more thought leaders in the industry, I would say John Walker was a thought leader. His son uh, is becoming a thought leader. Roger McFadden is a thought leader. An up and comer in Canada is uh, Mike Sawcheck. And of course we have Steve Ashkin. And Jeff, I've known Steve for 20 years. From the moment I met him, he's talking about green cleaning and sustainability. The other day I was thinking, I don't even know if the term green cleaning had been coined 20 years ago. <laughs> but Steve has always been involved with green cleaning and sustainability. He's always believed there's a way we can clean that protects health, that is safer for the user, for the building users and the environment. It's who he is. So I actually, if I may say, I think he's probably the leading thought leader in the professional cleaning industry today. Now, as far as brands, when I started out 20 years ago, we had a lot of uh, what I call mom and pop manufacturers. And my goal with them was to make them experts and then thought leaders in the industry. Two I'd like to mention was Kyvet. I was with them for 20 years. No one knew what no touch cleaning was 20 years ago. Uh, they, were, they were a struggling startup as far as I was concerned. They were located in the back of a, a warehouse. We wrote articles, 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 promoting them as cleaning experts. And we brought in their major, their tools, no touch cleaning systems. The same happened with uh, US products. US products, we promoted them as experts in carpet cleaning, experts in carpet cleanings. Eventually we became thought leaders in carpet cleaning and also they made these hot water carpet extractors that can address all kinds of problems and cleaning carpet cleaning challenges. So those are the brands, they were the smaller brands. There's always room for a new thought leader brand or individual in the cleaning industry. That's what I love about the cleaning industry. There's always room for somebody new. But today, Jeff, the truth of the matter is it's the big boys and big girls that are the main thought leaders in our industry. And there's a reason for that. They're so big. 
when one of them introduces a new cleaning technology, a new carpet cleaning technology, a new system, whatever, people take notice. They're already automatically thought leaders because they're so big. So that's kind of where we stand today. But as I say, there's always room for somebody to get in the door. Well, that's a perfect segue to maybe my last question. You know, some may be watching this and be saying, I have some good ideas. Good. Or an organization might be thinking that too. So what does it take to become a thought leader, whether in an individual or an organization? All right, we mentioned Ashton earlier. He's passionate about what he believes, but you know, I don't, I think passionate has become another buzzword. I like to say he believes in what he believes and he believes in himself. If you're gonna be a thought leader, you've gotta believe in what you believe and believe in yourself. Next, we mentioned time. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes two, three, four years before your stature rises to the point of being a thought leader. Then, and I think you'll appreciate this, you've got to get published. Now we've both been in publishing for two decades. And yes, we've lost some trade publications. Every industry has, but Jeff, you know what I know? Every industry has one, two, three, four major trade publications. The people in that industry turn to those trade publications because it's their peers. It's where they learn about their industry and where things are going. But here's the magic for a thought leader. It gives you credibility. There's really no other way to get the credibility, to get the credibility you need to be a thought leader than to get published. Then you have, need to have what I call a living, breathing website. A living, breathing website is one that changes. You're adding new blogs, you're adding new GIFs, you're adding new images, tip sheets. It's a living, breathing thing. It's alive. If I might say, I visited a former client's website recently. I haven't been with them for three years, and I just happened to look. The site looks about the same. And the blogging stopped when we stopped. Jeff, this is what I believe, and I think others will believe this. In peer and communications, when I see something like that, it tells me somebody died here. It's death. You can't let that happen. You've got to keep it living and breathing. The same is true with social media. For instance, we're in the B2B industry and LinkedIn is where we are. We try to update our clients' uh, LinkedIn profiles with articles, content, posts, images, GIFs every single day. You've got to keep it alive. Major companies will have somebody doing it two and three times a day. You've got to keep your social media presence alive. And then there's something else I'd like to mention from my own personal experience. You've got to have perseverance. Now, perseverance, Jeff, and time are not the same thing. Perseverance means as you raise in increasing stature as a thought leader, you're going to be ridiculed. The companies are going to say, oh, their products aren't any good. It's overrated. You're going to be viewed as a fad. It's part of the territory. It's part of the journey. Here's what happened to me, Jeff. I wrote two books on the cleaning industry in the 1990s. And to promote my books, I used to go to America, I, America Online, AOL. They had a very active cleaning and maintenance message board back in the, in the 1990s. These people would come on and they'd ask questions, you know, how do I get clients? How do I fire clients? How do I address this? I just spilled all this on my carpets, my client's carpet, what should I do? You know, Jeff, I had three companies, medium-sized companies. I'd seen just about everything. So I would answer these questions to the best of my ability. Well, here's what happened. I really didn't realize there was a king and queen of this message board. And they didn't like me stepping on their territory. They didn't like me. If I said A, they said B. If I said B, they said C. And they ridiculed me. But Jeff, at first, I was going to walk away. But then I said, how can I promote these books? I just closed my eyes to them. I persevered. I persevered. I kept answering questions night and day. All of a sudden, I get a call from New York City. 
This company in the Janssen industry says they're looking for a company spokesperson. Would you fly to New York and talk to us? Two weeks later, they call me again. Would you fly to New York and talk to us? Then they hire me. Perseverance, first stepping stone. Then two years later, I decide I want to make a change. I call ISSA and the receptionist puts me on to somebody, a woman that's no longer there. And I say, I'm Robert Kravis. I remember you from the message boards. I couldn't believe it. She remembered me from the message boards. ISSA was going through some online changes then. About a week later, I got a call from ISSA. Would you come to Chicago and um, have a gun for this? About three weeks later, I get another call. Would you come to Chicago and have lunch with us? And this time, John Garfinkel offers me a job. So what happened there? Perseverance. It led to one stepping stone, then to a bigger stepping stone. If you believe in what you believe and believe in yourself, you just got to persevere and you'll make it. And then the final thing I think a thought leader needs to have is they have to really be honest with themselves. When I was younger and before the internet, I used to go follow these motivational speakers all over the country. And there was this one guy I really liked. I saw him three times in every presentation. He would go, if you like what you see, call Oprah. If you like what you see, call Oprah. That guy wanted to get on Oprah. He wanted to make a quick million bucks and disappear. You know what, Jeff? He disappeared because his goal was just the money. What I find is that successful thought leaders are in it to help others, to help individuals, to change an industry. They're in it for the long term. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that become successful long terms. And as far as the money, Jeff, what I've seen is that the money comes. The money comes. You just persevere and you stick with it. So those are my thoughts on thought leadership.